Welcome back to Canadian Justice, where we're discussing the largest art fraud in Canadian history and the documentary film that exposed it, as well as the new production order the police have issued against the filmmaker demanding all raw and unedited footage in that film be handed over to the police. Now, Ian, this production order requiring a journalist and filmmaker to provide all this interview source material to the police. Does that in any way compromise our guaranteed rights under the charter to a free press? The, the police might say no, but uh, I would suggest yes, it does. Um, I mean, another important principle the Supreme Court has said in previous cases is that the freedom of the press and freedom of expression that we all have under 2B of the charter not only protects your right to express yourself, and communicate and publish information, it also protects your right to gather that information. And so, as Jamie alluded to a little earlier, um, the question becomes, Does these do these kind of production orders or search warrants on journalists, do they have a chilling effect on how a journalist does their work? Because if it does, and, and I certainly think it does, and, and Jamie has suggested that it does, and most journalists would, would say that it does, I mean, I, um, I wouldn't give a lot of interviews if it was the equivalent of inter being interviewed by the police. Yeah, yeah. And well, exactly. And so, I'm not, a, I've never been, a, I'm not a criminal. The, pr the problem is, is that proving that is almost impossible. It's like proving a negative. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. how do you prove there's a chilling effect um, unless somebody actually says, look, if you're going to give this to the police, I'm not talking to you. So it, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to prove. Mm -hmm. So the question of does it affect freedom of the press or freedom of expression really turns on what's the overall impact of these kind of production orders or search warrants on the media generally? And what's the, the, the you got to take a step back and try to look at what's the, uh, the effect globally on this kind of um, practice by the police. And uh, I certainly think it, it has a negative impact on that. Now, one other thing I want to ask both of you, I'll start with you, Ian, is isn't there some other way for the police to obtain this information? I mean, these were just interviews that Jamie was doing. It's not as if he was filming a crime in action where I can see a different argument perhaps at play. These were These were just interviews with people and the police have actually interviewed those very same people and interviewed them for longer than Jamie did. So does yeah, that so play that, any role, Ian? That's one of the elements of the test that we'll be arguing in court um, on July 7th um, in order for the documents uh, or sorry, the raw footage in this case uh, to be released. Um, uh, the judge has to be convinced that there's no other way that the information can reasonably be obtained. And two, that the public interest in investigating and prosecuting uh, crimes outweighs uh, Jamie's right to privacy mm -hmm. in, in gathering that information and, and making a documentary. So there's a balancing test is the second part. But one of our key arguments is going to be that, um, that the police have already gathered the same information or certainly could have by conducting their own interviews with almost all of the 17 interview subjects that they want the footage of. Um, they've, they've spoken to all these people or they've gotten uh, statements or, right. or testimony from other court proceedings from a couple of them. Uh, there's a, a couple of them that are no longer alive that right. uh, they right. to get to. Did so yes, the short answer is yes, they can get the information Jamie, elsewhere. Jamie, is there anything you want to add to that in about 30 seconds? And, and maybe is there a way people can support your case as well? <laughs> Uh, yes, I mean, I th I think Ian has has outlined it very well. You know, it's it's what and, and as have you. That's an interesting point. We didn't film a crime; we filmed a conversation, uh, and, and uh, you know, the chilling effect on on me and other journalists is is obvious. Uh, so yes, we do have, in fact, a, a GoFundMe campaign uh, to try to uh, help defray some of the costs that we're. In occurring and fighting this fight and it is called stop the seizure awesome uh, so yeah I'll, 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 we'll put we'll throw the link up on the page and i want to thank you both for coming on to share your story it was fascinating thank you thanks so much for having us